Welcome back to Gadgets TV. I'm Muqtadar Khan. I'm a professor at the University of Delaware. And today I'm talking to Sheikh Yusuf Yustis and to Dr. Naveed Parker. Uh, please continue. So the challenge comes in when children actually have time to spend eight to nine hours on a screen without any thought being put into what kind of things they are watching. So as parents, as uh, elders, it is our responsibility that we do provide them with an alternative to spend those eight or nine hours where they can learn their, their deen. And when they grow up, they understand the stories that, that we were told, you know, and unfortunately we don't have that type of environment today where, where elders would sit down and tell those stories and, and, and you know, these screens are that medium. So presence in that medium is, is necessary and Guidance TV is, uh, is providing that service to the community uh, and reaching out um, to, to millions of um, uh, Muslims across the U.S. through its satellite and through its uh, terrestrial network. Sheikh, I'm hearing a lot of tall claims about the transformative impact of TV. Could you give us an example or perhaps uh, share an experience to tell us of what kind of impact this TV has? Well, as I mentioned already, the fact that we reach into the prisons, we've had a number of the prisoners write to us and say they came to Islam or they got back into Islam asking us to mail out some of our free Qurans and the pamphlets and things that we send out. And this is very well appreciated and, and well received. Additionally, in the hospitals, we've seen a large number of people get a much closer and better look at what's real Islam according to the bishop that came to Islam, that was uh, the, his big thing was seeing this on the internet and the TV. But I think more specifically was when we first opened up our hotline, when we have the 800 number on the screen, people can call in and talk. The very first person who called in was a lady in Austin, Texas, uh -huh. and she said, I want to make Shahada. And I said, how do you know what Shahada is? She said that she had been watching since we started, they bought a a receiver, a dish, and they were going through it, just like I was explaining a little earlier, with the click, click, click on the remote, and boom, there it was, and she watched it, and watched it, and watched it, and it was about three months of watching this, and she said if there was any way, and then all of a sudden she sees the 800 number, she called in, she wants to enter Islam. She had never met a Muslim, had no connection with the Muslims, she entered Islam on television. Now when I went there for Ramadan to that same place, Lady came up to me wearing hijab. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam. I said, this voice sounds familiar, you know? And this Candace, who had become Mariam, yeah. has another lady with her. She has her daughter with her. She's bringing people to give shahada to. Everybody in her family made shahada over a period of time watching the guidance TV. And I think that's a very good example of the impact that we have across America. Well, well as, as a... As a professor who studies the impact of sometimes of media, etc., uh, tell me why uh, we are going backwards, it seems to me, in technology, because the world seems to be going more towards internet. I have a big TV at home which I haven't turned on in two years. I watch a lot of TV, but it's all on, on my desktop, on my laptop, uh, so mostly internet-based. Even the debates, presidential debates now, we are watching on our computers. Uh, and with the rise of YouTube, for example, uh, now there are lots of uh, shiuch on, on the internet who have their own channels that they are running with thousands and thousands of subscribers. Uh, it seems that uh, we are going back to slightly older technology and, uh, and it may require people to retool themselves in order to, so if we were to introduce Guidance TV in Delaware, Will we have to change people's watching habits, maybe even change their technological setup at home uh, before they can actually enjoy the benefits of Guidance TV? What you've described actually is the problem. A lot of our teachers and professors who have a lot to offer, like yourself, are compartmentalizing themselves by having these places on the internet but not reaching out. How many people would really be looking for you by name and, and they're not even a Muslim? No. They wouldn't be looking for me by name either. But what happens when there's a way that they feel more comfortable with? The television. Oh, let me go over there. Boom. And this is why it's had such an impact. There is no other Muslim channel in America, originating in America, 
broadcasting 24 hours a day, no commercials, no advertising, no subscription charges. It's totally free and free of ads. This means anytime people go there, they're going to see something positive about the way of life of Muslims. It's like saying you have found a way of cold calling. It works. It works. So let's talk about Delaware to, to an extent. So what, what, what do you think uh, Guidance TV would do for Delaware? So let me actually go back um, and, and answer your question about going back to a technology. And I agree with you that uh, a terrestrial TV uh, network would be an older uh, generation of technology. However, technology is actually like fashion. Uh, if you see, a lot of time fashion comes back, and even in technology, we see something that has happened, the ideas may have existed, or rudimentary format may have existed, but they came back uh, in a better format. Uh, so, so it is clear that right now, cable TV and satellite TV, a lot of people watch it. However, it is also clear that the, the prices, the rates are rising. And those, I do not see them coming down. I see them going up because more people are shifting towards internet-based uh, technologies. And, uh, and as they move, the revenue for cable and satellite will go down. And to maintain their operations, they're going to have to raise more uh, subscription charges. And as they continue to do that, they'll price themselves out of the market. So now how do we compete with internet? Now, internet does not have any controlled environment where you can control what is being displayed. Can you be sure that you know if there is a content on internet that you do not approve of, that your children are not going to watch it, uh, especially if they're small children? So there could be propaganda videos from ISIS, for example. There could be videos from other groups. So this terrestrial network allows that, that control of what is being Put, put out. Now, I also see that uh, there is huge cost attached to it. So let's say if it costs $20,000 to put up one antenna. You know, it, it can sound a lot. However, if we look at the benefits that Delaware sits in the middle between Philadelphia, Baltimore. And Philadelphia alone has 200,000 Muslims. So the reach to that community is huge. Now, for them, in terms of um, retooling themselves, all it needs is an antenna. And in terms of antenna sales, if you look at the figures, if you look at the numbers in the US, the numbers are on the rise exponentially. And this comes to me as a surprise as well, because there are a number of case studies. And I, I just uh, uh, read a case study in Texas, a young man opening an antenna shop hoping that he might be able to sell one, uh, 100 or 200 antennas a month. He's now selling 27,000 antennas in a month. So well, where are those what, antennas? What programming is driving that? That is an interesting question, and I do not know what is driving it. However, and that is the point that we need to go back and further investigate this so that we have, so, so there are indicators, there are these feelers that, that there is value mm -hmm. in it. In it now, have we figured it out? Have we worked out all the kinks? No, we are still in that process, and and I'm hoping that once we are done through this process, we would have a model. You know, it is possible that we may decide because Guidance TV is already in Delaware. You know, it is available through satellite. It is available through internet. Satellite has a problem that that you know you need a heavy, a very expensive pieces of equipment. Uh, internet has a problem that on smaller devices, you know, for example, on phone, there is that data cap. You know, people don't watch it. Internet, you know, the infrastructure for Guidance TV is is not at a level, uh, you know, where it is available seamless. You know, the best connectivity is through the app. Um, you know, where where there bandwidth are no will make a lot of difference. That's right. So yeah. so those those bandwidth issues, the cost issues, those exist. So and I think. Considering the whole impact that fashion trends, putting up, putting up, you know, having a control over what kind of content is going on, uh, where we can feel confident that our children, our youth, 
can watch it without having any, you know, any side effects in terms of getting radicalized or, or those, because those are real concerns. So I do see a lot of value, and I hope uh, that once we are through the practice of, of developing a business plan, how this is actually going to be done, uh, that it will benefit hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people uh, in the region. Well, the antenna is the subject here because this is the only difference. We have already got the same thing here that we have around the world. We have the internet, we have the apps, that's everywhere. The fact that we're also covered by the satellite doesn't mean everybody can access it because of the cost, as yeah. I said. The, <clears throat> the antenna itself is a different subject. You have a big population here. What is the income status of the average person? If it's lower than the mean across the whole country, then you have to consider that the free antenna is the best way to go. Because free to air means literally that. The only cost they have is five bucks at Radio Shack. Put, plug that little antenna in the back of their television where a cable would go, yeah. and they're watching Guidance TV. Well, th there are different uh, issues here. For example, one of the attraction to you with this medium is that it allows you to go into homes where otherwise there would have been no opportunity exactly. to go. But uh, listening to Dr. Bakar, for him, he, uh, I think he sees this as a control mechanism of controlling what our children are exposed to. Yeah, but uh, see, you're talking about the Muslim side. The, the Muslim side of it. This is what I'm saying. We want to get further out here. This is what's been lacking. Yeah, because the, the free antennas. The public is relying on the media, and they're relying on a exactly. few other people to tell them what to say. By getting the message out to the non-Muslim public, this is what you want to do. Mm -hmm. so this you, is what's needed around the world. So the free antennas you would distribute to everybody, not to Muslims. As soon as you put the antenna up, anybody in a 30-mile range can watch it, just like that for Oh, okay. And, and there, is, there is another added advantage to it, that, uh, that once you have that antenna, you know, so, so I can understand that getting that antenna in the door could be a challenge, but if we cross that hurdle, then we know there is no competition. No, that's a good point. Right? There is no competition. It's just if somebody wants to watch Islamic channel, it is this channel. So, well, I think it was a very interesting conversation, and I think uh, we, we need to explore this uh, exciting idea, and uh, I hope that uh, people in Delaware can also benefit from the messages and wonderful program programming that Guidance TV is providing. So thank you very much for being with us, both of you, and I hope something positive comes out of this interaction. And we all get guided with Guidance, Guidance TV. TV. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah,